Everybody. Good morning. How's everybody this morning on this? I think we could actually fall weather out there now. So let's go um, over some announcements. Um, today we have a board meeting after church. We have a congregational meeting on November 14th after church. And then October 31st, our fifth Sunday service, and we will have a commissioning. So excited about that. Um, so we, since we're hosting and it's going to be here, we're going to make that our fellowship dinner for the quarter. Um, so we're asking everyone to bring a soup to share, um, and either bread or crackers, whatever goes with your soup. Um, and also a dessert drinks will be provided. And, um, so we just ask that you'll help us make this a super surface and, um, we'll have lots of fellowship. So, nobody even <laughs> I tried. <laughs> it's a super service. Oh. Super. Oh. Oh. I know. It's funny. Oh. And I'm, it's a bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> it failed, didn't it? What happens when you write your announcements at 1 a.m.? <laughs> um, so, also, we will have the DWF Grace Group Yard Sale and Bazaar on November 6th, 8 to 2 in the Fellowship Hall. Um, if you want to bring donations to the yard sale, we will start October 31st after from 10 to 2, and Angela will be here to accept those. Um, nothing after Thursday um, can we accept, so make sure that you get your yard sale stuff in before Thursday. 
Um, if anybody wants to donate to the bazaar, um, just see me or Angela, and um, we'll we'll work on that. Um, and then we are asking for if anybody wants to do baked goods for the bazaar, um, you can do the donations of the baked goods. So um, I know we have some people that do some really awesome stuff that you know that they look forward to, or so cakes and cookies and goodies. So. Um, just a reminder to be with us on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, on the Zoom meeting. Um, we're having lots of stuff, and I understand we're getting a new guy. Yes. New prayer guy. So he'll be getting that out, and we'll have it in the back so you can join us with that. And then also on Mondays um, at noon, if you'll just pause, and we'll do a collective prayer. Um, and that's all I have. Do you have an announcement? Uh, oh. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to uh, say first, thank you for your love and your kindness to, uh, last week for appreciation. It warmed my heart so greatly, and I thank all of you uh, for your gifts and your love shown last week. I am very appreciative of that. So praise God for each of you, and thank you for that. I uh, just want to let you know, office hours are every Wednesday from 10 to 3. If you want to come by and just visit or, or, or come help, we would love to have you come by with us on Wednesday from 10 to 3. So we'd love to see you at the office hour. I want to reiterate about the commissioning service. I would love to see all of you there. I know it's at 5 o'clock, but it's a joint service with our other churches as well, but I would love to see all of our First Christian folks in the place for that service on that day. Just wanted to uh, reiterate that. Uh, what I'm going to be doing on the, on the Wednesdays that I'm at the office, I am going to uh, be uh, trying to have lunch with a bunch of you uh, if, if you're not working. Or uh, well, we can get off of work at lunch, and I'd love to meet you for lunch. So there'll be a little schedule uh, for you to sign up for Wednesday lunch with the pastor. It's Dutch Treat. Amen. Uh, so, and just to grow with you, learn the story, get to know you more. So I've got the time now to do it, and I want to spend some time with each of you. So please, uh, when you see that sign-up sheet next Sunday, go ahead and sign up for a lunch, one of these Wednesdays for lunch. I would love to have lunch with you. Or you can do a group session if you want to do that. If you want to say, hey, y'all, let's get to the pastor. I would love to do that so I can grow with you and, and learn with you and just grow, get more intimate with you as we grow together in ministry. And so I want to let you know that so we can uh, put that on your mind and prepare for that. And then put your favorite restaurant and uh, whatever you suggest a restaurant as well so we can go by those places. I would love to learn some new restaurants in, uh, what is it, Warner Robins. So thank you. <laughs> what happens when you're a globe trotter you forget where you are yeah, <laughs> all right let's do our call to worship praise god as servants of god praise god's name Blessed Blessed be god's, god's name, name from this time forth forever from the rising of the sun to its setting god's name is to be praised praise, praise the lord. lord all right so our first Praise Him is Majesty, and it is a little insert in your bulletin. <coughs> and Sue and Pastor are going to lead us in this. <laughs> Let's stand together. <laughs> Kingdom of glory, 
some new stuff today. All right, let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you together today. There are so many of us with heavy hearts and our world is in disarray. Our burdens are great and we feel a loss of friends, family, and co-workers who have passed. Help us, Lord, to find the miracles you place around us each day. Help us, Lord, to find the smallest of blessings when life beats us down. Oh, Lord, you have told us you will never forsake us. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see. Open our hearts that we may hear you. Open our ears that we may hear you. Open our hearts that we may love those that you put in our place. Let us remember you are the great provider, healer, Lord, we pray as your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Lord. Pray that the chilly weather just woke you up. Amen. And it made you feel good as the old saints would say, chill my body but not my soul. Amen. Well, this morning's weather was enough to chill your soul. Amen. And shake you out of the summertime and now now we get real fall weather. And I'm so excited about it. You know, I go to the football game now. Amen. I don't leave the football game in the heat. That's not football. Amen. The football is when it's cold and you got to put a jacket on. Amen. So I'm going to go next week. Amen. Well, I need to go Friday. Friday. But uh, I tell you what, I am so grateful today that the Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day. So grateful to allow us to come to worship together this morning. And I'm just thankful for all of you. Amen. And so we thank God for his blessing. You know, this week has been an interesting week. God has been working miracles in the midst of all the chaos that goes on in the world. And just despite what we hear on the news, what's going on in society, I want you to be reminded that God is still a miracle worker. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited that he still works miracles. And this week, what testimonies I've seen and heard this week of the beauty and the joy of God. So in that, with that mind, uh, in our mind this morning, as we prepare for or to share in our joys and concerns, there might be a few things you would like to share to remind us of the greatness of God and the faithfulness of God. But also, there might be some concern that you want to lift up that we can ask God to be that miracle working God in that midst of those things. So I invite you now to share with us that we can pray as one family of faith and lift up our hearts to Almighty God. Amen. Yes, Brother John. Okay. I've been asked to ask for prayers for three different families. <coughs> they lost several loved ones in the last all recently. And one of them is Dorothy Batten. B A T T E N. Her family, uh, she lost a son in law to COVID, a husband to a heart attack, and a mother to a heart attack mm -hmm. in the same month of September. Mm -hmm. and also, Edith Finn. Finley, F-E-N-D-L-E-Y. Uh, she is in not good physical shape, but her son is uh, in the hospital with COVID and, and not doing well. And I've been also asked to <coughs> prepare for Leticia Shelton, 
says, let me tell you about my Jesus. That's right. Folks, he is awesome. Yes, he is. My daughter has been dealing with the cyst inside of her throat for a year now. Mm -hmm. Because of COVID, because of this and that and the other, she'd be done everything to get the surgery and then it would back out, back out. She finally had it. And my God, they went in there, they said it was something they had never seen before. They just can't explain it. The cyst was gone mm -hmm. when they got in there. Hallelujah. They said they had never seen this before, and they looked around and they said, "Oh, we don't, we don't know what's happened. We just mm. can't, can't explain it." Mm. I said, "Well, I tell you this: I don't know what happened, but I tell you who's responsible." There you exactly. go. Thank God, God with it. All yeah. my Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It all gone through the said, "Wow!" Amen. Amen. I tell you, Amen. God is good. I tell you, I celebrate that. I tell you, if my great grandma here, she would have shot it with you. I tell Amen. You, so. Amen. I don't, you know, sometimes, I, you know, I, my great grandma say, keep living. You'll know after a while. Amen. My neighbors so I, think I'm crazy. Oh, I've been shouting all week. That's all right. Listen, <laughs> stay crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah. Absolutely. What John Wesley said, uh, light a fire and let everybody see me burn. Absolutely. Hallelujah. So that's all right. So and I'm there. You come ask me why I'm shouting. <laughs> 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 Tell them about the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. That just warmed my spirit. I tell you, praise God for that. Thank you, Lord. Any others this morning? All right. Well, let's pray. I tell you, I'm going to try to keep myself calm, but that just chilled, that just really chilled my spirit. I tell you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we just thank you. Yes. We just thank you for every good and perfect gift. We thank you that you are our Lord and Savior. We thank you that you work miracles. We thank you that you're creator, God, you're our Abba Father. We thank you, God, that we can call upon you and you hear us when we pray. Lord, we thank you for the gentle reminder that there is nothing too hard for you, Amen. that with you all things are possible. And so, Lord, we just glorify you for that this morning. We lift you up for that and we put a praise within our heart and we just say thank you, Jesus, for how you always work miracles for our lives and how you always remind us that your love is always with us. So, Lord, we praise you for this day. We thank you for every good thing that you have given us. And we thank you that we can gather and worship today and hear these testimonies of joy, to hear that, Lord, we're still, uh, as, as uh, uh, old memories would say, I'm, I may be hopping, but I ain't stopping. We can hear the moments that we're still ticking, Lord. We thank you for the moment that we're still able to have our activities of our limb and have our being. We thank you for that, that we can feel the chill of the day reminding us, Lord, of your love and kindness toward us, that we can still feel your gentleness in our hearts. And Lord, we just lift you up today. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness of sin. We thank you for Jesus died on the cross for us. And we thank you that because of his uh, giving his life for us, God, that we have an opportunity and another chance to get it right with you. Lord, we know we have sinned and fallen short of your glory, but God, you've been so willing and just and so kind to forgive us of all of our sins and unrighteousness and anything we have done by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. We thank you, O oh God, that you give us those chances and the gift of forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ. Thank you for that gift of salvation. And may we not take it for granted that what Jesus Christ did, that he paid the price for us. And Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, this morning, we thank you that the Bible teaches us that we can ask anything in Jesus' name. And God, you're willing and just to hear those prayers and answer them on our behalf. And Lord, there are a few concerns within our hearts today that we want to lift up to you. We lift up the Batten family, God, and the loss of their loved ones. What tragedy have they faced, Lord? And I just pray that you comfort them, give them peace, and heal their mind and their hearts in this time of bereavement, I pray, Lord. 
Lord, we lift up uh, the Finley, uh, Sister Eda Finley, God. We pray today that you would improve her health and may her body line up with the word of God. We pray for her son as well, Lord, that you would touch his body in Jesus' name. And God, we rebuke that spirit of infirmity, God, and we loose healing power into their lives, God, I pray. Lord, we lift up Sister Lakeisha Sheldon this morning, and we pray, God, that you touch her body, heal her from those injuries of that wreck, God. And we pray that all of these persons will have a testimony that, God, you have given them peace, and you have healed them, you have strengthened them. And we pray over them in Jesus' name. We lift up Sister Mike, uh, Brother Michael this morning, and we pray that you touch his body in Jesus' name. And we pray against that COVID, God, and we pray for speed of recovery. We pray for wholeness in his body in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, that you are healed. And God, that you answer our prayers. Thank you for every person who is here this morning. We pray blessings over their life and that you continue to strengthen them and keep them in your care, I pray. Lord, bless them and they're going and they're coming. They're lying down and they're rising up. They're laboring through their leisure, through their laughter, through their tears. I pray, Lord, blessings over their life and the favor of God and the peace of God be among them, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this church and the things that you're doing within this ministry and how you are building a great a uh, beacon of light for this community. We thank you for that, and we pray that you continue to cover us, continue to unify us, continue to push us into the area of ministry that you desire for us, for this community, for kingdom advancement. Lord, I pray that your peace and strength will be our portion, that we will not get weary in the journey, but we'll keep steadfast, consistent, and committed to what you called us to do in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up the joys Today, we thank you for the testimony of Sister Donna's daughter, Lord, and we thank you for that, and we praise you for that, and we thank you that through her testimony, you're reminding us again that all things are possible through you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that today we'll leave this service with that encouragement in our heart that God, you still work miracles. And Lord, we thank you for that joy and that excitement, knowing that you're with us. And God, that you never leave us nor forsake us. So, Lord, we praise you for that. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. And every heart who loves God said, Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for that. And thank God for his joy. You know, Christ's table is spread for us all. And the gift of Jesus Christ is given and ready to be shared with us all. And this morning, we get to come to the table and we get to uh, gather together. Amen. And a place of fellowship, a place of belonging, that at Christ's table, every time we view the table, every time we're offered this invitation, we're offered that invitation of reminding ourselves that we belong to Christ. And today as we come to Christ's table, we come remind, being reminded that he loves us, he cares for us. And so today, may your gentle reminder be this, that he loves us. And I love that hymn that says, oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his own life. What more could he give? I tell you what, when we gather at that table, I just can't stop thinking about it. He loves me. You know, this week, and I say this and I hush, but this week I had moments where I felt lonely. There were moments, even though people were around me and friends and family are near, there was days I felt lonely because sometimes you feel like nobody understands. You're like, Lord, I'm going through life. I'm going through ministry. Does anybody see? Anybody feel? And sometimes life gives you those moments. But then here comes Jesus Christ. Just says, you know what? I never left you alone. I'm with you. And that at the table, I, I, you know, I just can't wait to get to Sunday morning. You know, you can take communion through the week if you want to. But I can't wait to get to church on Sunday morning. And when I walk in, you know, my first place I look at when I walk in is the table. And I look at the table, and you know what it says to me? You're with me, God, and I'm not alone. This morning, I want you to reflect on that. Those days you feel lonely, those days you feel like nobody understands, when you enter this sanctuary and you look at the table, matter of fact, when you look at your dining room table, just look at it and say, that reminds me. <laughs> that reminds me he is with me. And every chair around my table, that's a place for Jesus. And he's always with me. As a hymn we're going to sing later, that he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm his own. <laughs> but joy that is, that because what he did at the cross, he's with us, never leaving us for no forsaking us. So as we stand and sing our uh, hymn today, Glory to His Name, it's in our insert. We invite you to sing with joy and meditate on the fact that he's at the table with us and he's given us his life. And we can pray by saying glory 
to his name. Let's sing, stand and sing with uplifting voice. Glory to his name. I want you to mean that. That when we sing a praise like that, we mean it. And we sing it with conviction. Glory to his name. Amen. You know, I love the hymns, if y'all can't tell. I love them because look at, listen to the words. Penned so beautifully. Sometimes I, can, I can't think of the words and then a hymn will come and tell it all for me. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing was. What it says, sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of my glory to his name. His blood was applied to my life, to my sin, to my mistakes, to my evil desires. Like Paul said, the good I want to do seems I can't do, but the evil I don't want to do, it seemed to be all around me. But then what Paul said after that, there by the grace of God, hallelujah, his blood was applied to it. I want to make sure we understood that we sing that with conviction, that glory to his name. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Let's, let's sing that again. How about that? Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was a blood of life. Glory see your life in that? 
that you was a wretch undone. Wasn't fit to live, as old saints would say, but wasn't ready to die. But then God applied his blood to it. What a beautiful thing. And I just can't forget that. I just can't forget that. So when I come to the table, I just think about the blood was applied for me. It was shed for me. And the beauty of that I always speaks in my heart. So on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he gave him thanks, he broke it, gave to the disciples and said, eat all of this, for this is my body broken for you. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup and when he gave given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, drink ye all of it, for this is the blood applied, applied as a new covenant for you and poured out for many for the remissions of sin. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Amen. He died on Calvary's cruel, cruel cross to pay redemption for our sins. As we come to your table, we bow before you in grateful remembrance of what you did for us. With humble hearts of thanksgiving, we have not loved you as we ought and not loved all our neighbors as ourselves. We have not always been kind, humble, and forgiving. So as we come to your table, Lord, we ask that this bread, which is broken as your body for us, reminds us that you will heal our brokenness. And as we take the cup, your blood poured for our sins, you will cleanse us of our wrongdoing and our self-centered thoughts. Thank you, Lord, that you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, or that we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and clothed in your righteousness by grace and through faith. We praise your holy name and give thanks forevermore for your great faithfulness. Amen. Amen. As always, you're invited to come and share at Christ's table. And there are two ways we serve. If you did not receive a prepackaged element, you're welcome to receive from the pan. Our deacon and elder will be glad to serve you. As you come down the aisle, we ask that you get some hand sanitizer, a trick of that uh, hand sanitizer machine. Just stick it in, stick it out quickly, because if you keep it on there, it'll keep pouring. It's, like a, it's just like Jesus' blood. It never stops flowing. But if you just go in there, get in there, come on out, and you'll be right. Please keep your mask on as you receive the elements. Hold your elements as always and return uh, through the window aisle. And then we'll take it as one family of faith. I invite you now to come to share uh, at Christ's table as he has shared his love for us. Of Christ, take and feast in your heart with faith and thanksgiving. The cup of salvation, let us feast in our heart with thanksgiving. Thanks be unto God for his gift of life toward us. May we always feast upon it with thanksgiving and with praise in our heart. Amen. Well, friends, uh, giving is a part of our worship, and uh, it's uh, not about the size of the gift, but it's about what's on the heart. And this morning, I pray that we will 
uh, be faithful in our giving on what God has placed in our heart for ministry and that we can go forward as a church of uh, faith and doing the works that God has do, has called us to do. Amen. You know, I was thinking and reflecting that uh, in my life of ministry, I've seen people give, give big gifts and small gifts. And I've always told people that I'm reminded and I try to remind everybody that no, that's because your size of gifts makes you no better than anybody else. It's about the heart and the motives of your heart. It's about what God has placed inside us and that we believe in God and faith and faith in God that we know he's working things out for better of our world. And so this morning in your faithfulness, I pray you have meditated upon and prayed to God and heard God in your gifts as we tie faithfully to the kingdom of God at the First Christian Church. And always, you all have been so faithful and kind to continue the work of ministry because they cheerful giver. So that means, that means you got a smile on your face, don't you? You got a beautiful smile because we know we give cheerfully because we know what God does for us when we give. We know we serve a faithful giving God. And, and it's not about a gimmick. You know, I, I've been to churches where they think about giving the offering God will bless you with me. It's not a gimmick. It's not a trick. It's not witchcraft. Amen. It's about the heart and that God loves us and we love him back and we believe in tithing and being faithful so we can see the kingdom of God expand. Amen. So I pray, Lord, preach your heart this morning as we give faithfully uh, to Almighty God in our gifts. <laughs> Stand together, praise God. people who gave for the upbuilding of this kingdom. And I pray, Lord, you continue to bless us as we keep doing the work of ministry together. We love you and we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, friends, it is preaching time in this cathedral of the Lord, and I'm looking forward to sharing what the Lord has given my heart to you today. Now, my sermon is not long. At least I say it's not. And, uh, and that's, you know, whenever a preacher say that, you already know it's long. But uh, <laughs> no, actually, usually I have eight pages. Today I got six. Uh, Amen. So that I give you two, I, that means my sermon. That means to be five minutes shorter. Uh, he will. I tell you, uh, yeah, I do talk a lot, don't I? <laughs> oh, Lord, I make up for it in all them speeches I give during service. I tell you. Well, y'all ain't never shut me up, so I know you love me. So I pray the Lord. <laughs> we love you. One church I did pastor, somebody passed a note and said, Reverend, you don't have to do a sermon after everything. I said, well, that's what y'all hired me for. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, uh, but I, you know, I believe that's what I love about the disciples of Christ is we believe in being a teaching church. And I think in all things, if we're going to do something, we should know what it means. And we should have it in our heart what we mean, you know, and that's just how I feel about it. And then I, I, I love it. I just want everybody to know what they meant, what you're supposed to know. Amen. And it's the teacher in me. Now that I don't resign, give me about three months and then I'll stop talking so much, you know. Um, I doubt that too, but. <laughs> you're standing in the pulpit. Amen. You know, it's just an exaggerated story. <laughs> Amen. So I'm looking forward to as we continue with this sermon series, but God changes everything. And I'm excited about what God has given us today. To share with you as you hear this word. I want this to be more of an encouraging word to you today, more than a fussing word or a challenging word, but just something encouraging to you uh, that will help you as you go forward in your life uh, in this journey. And I think it's a great message to transition us into what we're going to going to next and what God is doing and preparing 
start the new year. Uh, because many of us, when the new year comes, we've got a lot of things that we want to reset and refocus on. And so one of the things I think we need to make sure we have in our heart is to know that in all of this, God changes everything. So despite what happened this year, but despite what happened this week, what happened what yesterday, uh, God can change everything. We put that in our hearts and our minds. Here now the word of God from the Holy Writ, Genesis chapter 50. And we'll look at verse 20. I want you to hear this particular verse in your spirit. And I pray that it will bless your soul and be a reminder of the faithfulness of God. And that many people should be kept alive as they are today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Lord, I pray that it will please you to let me preach, not for fame nor reputation, but to the end that someone will believe and be saved. Anoint my words or my words will be dead. We pray that you bless this sermon today in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to talk about opposites. Opposites. That's what an opposites. Opposites. I want to say that. I get tongue tied of that. Opposites. Amen. Uh, when I began to uh, ponder upon this sermon, uh, I did think about the opposites and how in elementary school we learn about the, how opposites work. Up, down, uh, uh, hot, cold, big, small. And in that, I learned that uh, opposites can both have positive and negative connotations, right? Uh, those who like cold may not like hot. Those who like hot may not like cold. Those who want to be up may, want to be, may not want to be down. Those who down may want to be up. Some who laugh uh, may love to laugh. Some may love to cry. You know, everybody has options. The opposites in all kinds of ways. It can be negative or positive. It just depends on your perspective and how you look at that. But when you look at that sense of opposites, the first thing that came to my mind was the, uh, the thought of fact versus truth. What is fact? What is truth? And so are facts and truth uh, two labels for essentially the same, or are they essentially the same thing? Or are they separate and radically different from one another? Uh, is it possible to regard certain facts as true when they contradict what the Bible says? That's a question to think about. Now, for Christians, it's particularly important for us to uh, provide a biblical response to the question at hand because we live in a world where increasingly, Revealed divine truth is a uh, thing that is um, vehemently uh, rejected at times. Consequently, uh, materialistic facts are championed as the ultimate determinant of reality. And when such facts are supposed to be those pieces of information uh, discoverable only within the parameters of uh, what they say uh, scientific investigation. You know, the world says you can't figure nothing out unless you have some scientific logic. You got to investigate. You got to see, use a scientific method, uh, uh, come up with a hypothesis so you can understand is this truth or is this fact or is it real or not real? You know, so the reality is that in the end, all truth is God's truth. And the reason why anything is objectively or universally or immutably and or authoritatively true is because it flows from the source of all truth, and that is God uh, Himself. So, is there a difference between fact and truth? Let's begin by defining the terms. What is fact? Our English word fact comes from the Latin word factum, uh, which simply means something done. A fact is, therefore, a discrete piece of information that communicates a reality that exists, that happened, or that can be observed by experience. So the following are facts. The sky is blue. That's fact. Last year, Christmas fell on Friday. That's fact. Facts are neither universal nor permanent. Rather, facts are isolated, and hear this, can change. That is to say, facts are not unyielding absolutes. So, for example, if I say Mr. Smith is my president, that is an isolated fact for me living in the United States right now, but it's not the fact for someone living in China, right? Accordingly, when we talk about science, we're talking about the field of study that describes some facts. When it comes to telling us about the material world, these facts tend to be uh, reliable, but the judgment of science are never absolute. And when a new fact is discovered, old ones are abandoned in favor for those more up-to-date, right? 
And so let us not overlook that many alleged scientific facts or simply theories develop out of simpler items of perception. So that's what fact is. Now, what is truth? I gave you a lot of information on fact. Truth is defined as how things actually are. Truth is that which conforms with reality. Now, to simply put it, that which is true is that which is real. In the New Testament, the Greek word for truth is aletheia. Ale, oh, I can't get it out. I know it and I'm studying it. Uh, ale, uh, uh, aletheia. There it go. Hallelujah. Refers to the truth in thought and speech. Again, truth biblically from the Greek refers to truth in thought and in speech. It also refers to more uprightness in what a person does. Hence, truth is the, uh, that which is constant with mind, with will, with character, and the being of God. I'll say that again. Truth, nature is truth. God is truth. He, his very nature is truth. It thus comes as no surprise that the Bible speaks of truth as that which it reveals from God to man. Furthermore, because God is eternal and immutable, the truth is true everywhere. All the time, under all considerations, without the standards, everything and nothing would be true at the same time. Yet, let us never divine and unchanging truth with the uh, speculation claimed by truth in the minds of men. You know, truth is not the same as God's truth. Remember, the Bible teaches us that uh, God's ways are not our ways, neither his thoughts, our thoughts. His truth is different from our truth and what the world Feel is true. We see that in theology sometimes. That everybody who thinks something is true is not actually God's truth. It's about what man feels and what man thinks, and it doesn't mean that's God's way. And we see that through all kinds of different ways as we go through life. There's one reason why God, through special revelation, self-disclosed his word of truth so we can always refer back to the Bible, what is truth, uh, what God said, and therefore know what is really true. And I said all of this to say this about fact versus truth, because as we look at what opposites are, when we look at dealing with this thing that God changes everything, we have to understand the difference between fact and truth, because the devil will use fact to make us think negatively. They'll go, well, the fact is you're sick. The fact is you're depressed. The fact is you have anxiety. But that may be the fact, but in God, that's not my truth. The truth is, I may be sick, but here's the truth. Uh, God can heal. The fact is, I may be struggling financially, but the truth is, God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. He works opposite of the negative and makes positive all of, out of all of it. And we want us to remember that and reflect on what may be fact can change. It can change to God's truth according to what God's word says for our life. Are you with me this morning? Our text we have before us, we share in the life of Joseph. Joseph's life has been a series of trial and tragedy. Now, I don't know if I could be Joseph. I don't know if I can go through that. I've had my shares of trials and tribulations, but I don't know if I can go through what Joseph went through. A series of facts, but not truth, but it's still, he went through a lot. He has been on the road marked by many valleys and few mountains. If you ever started study his life, we have seen the difficult life he had as a child. We have witnessed the hatred and cruelty of his brothers. When you study, we see him working as a slave. Uh, we have seen him falsely accused and imprisoned. We have seen him abandoned and forgotten in that same prison. We have also seen him taken out of the prison and elevated to a position of prestige, power, and prominence in Egypt. We watched as Joseph was reunited with his brothers, and we saw God use him to bring his brothers to a place of repentance and we saw him reunited with his father as well. We have seen all the highs and the lows of Joseph's life. And through every battle and across every mountain he faced, one truth held true for him that God meant it for good. Isn't that something? His whole life was full of valleys and mountains, but he held on to the truth that came for a particular purpose and destination. You probably heard someone say, something they probably shouldn't have said or done, something that lacked tact, but someone else tried to cover it up with, they didn't mean that way, that way. they meant well, but that's, you know, you ever heard somebody say that before? 
what they were saying is that even though what the person said or did created a negative reality, that was not their intention. They had meant to cause harm, but that was not the case with Joseph's brother when they stripped him of his coat, dumped him in a pit, nor was it that case for when they greedily plucked him from the pit and sold him for a profit to slave traders headed to a foreign land. Joseph's brothers meant anything but well. They meant to cause him harm. They meant to ruin his life. They meant to dethrone him from the position of importance. He had come to believe he would one day hold. They meant bad, and actually they meant evil against him. But God, those two words are two powerful words. But God, they were two powerful words. And when you come across but God in Scripture, you better pay attention to that. Because what comes next will usually change their entire situation, especially if meant is added to it as well. But God meant, when you look at Genesis 50, 20, shows what God can do with something meant to harm you. He can not only, he can not only protect you in it, but he can also provoke you because of what you're going through. That's what I love about God. You can go through life troubles. You can go through misery and pain. But God is about pain and misery because he means good. For us, and that's God slapping the devil in the face when the devil said, I got you now. I'm gonna make you cry now. I'm gonna make you pout now. And then God said, Oh, yeah, you made it for evil. Watch what I do for him. But God meant it for our good. You better watch out. He's gonna do something. The exact thing Joseph's brothers had meant to cause him harm was the exact thing God used to promote him to his destiny. Even as Joseph nears the end of his life in these verses, he continues to display the remarkable faith in God. One thing he has confirmed and reaffirmed in my heart and mind, and that is the truth that God is behind every event that occurs in, our, occurs in our lives. There are no accidents, friends. There is no such thing as coincidences in God. There is only divine providence and the outworking of the perfect will of God in our lives. God always has a divine turnaround for our lives. I'm going to encourage you with that this morning. He has a divine turnaround for you. I don't know where you are in your life right now. Don't know how you feel at times. I don't know what you be thinking at times, but I want you to put this in your thought. Whatever you think, whatever negative comes in your mind, God has a divine turnaround for that for you. Now, what do you see when at the end of your day you look in the mirror? What do you see? What does your life look like when you compare what you value? What, 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 or value with what you have done. Have you ever gone to bed at night seeing the difference between who you are and who you want to be? I tell you what I see when I look in the mirror and I examine my life and I wrote a few things down as I looked at it because sometimes when I look in the mirror, I see a mixture of contradiction and opposites. And so sometimes I look in the mirror and I wrote some things down and I thought about this. Sometimes I see a face that has smiled with joy and a face that has wept with grief. I see a face that has been with pride and a face that has flushed with embarrassment. I see a face that has been real and authentic and a face that is hidden behind masks, not just because of COVID. I see a face of openness and receptive, uh, receptiveness, and I see a face that is closed and hard in that sometimes. I see a man that values honesty but has times of dishonest. I see a man that wants to be loyal but has also betrayed, betrayed himself and others. I see a man that has lived with integrity and a man that has compromised. I see a man who has said one thing and done another. I see a man that has offered peace and a man that has caused conflict. I see a man who has done the right thing and a man who has done the wrong thing. When I look in the mirror, I see a life that is rich in so many ways and impoverished in many other ways. When I looked in the mirror, I recall times I have acted with compassion and other times I have acted with indifferences. I can name people I have helped and I can name people I've hurt. I have forgiven and I have judged and condemned as well. I have been at peace and I have been a mess too. I recall times of courage and the truth telling and other times fear and silence. When I looked in that mirror, I saw a man who had been forced, uh, focused and certain and I have been lost and confused at times. I have been loving and I have been angry. I have been hateful at times. I, I see the beauty of humanity at times. And then I also see the disfigurement of my humanity. All of that contradictions and opposites. All of that when I look in the mirror and I look at myself. Contradiction and opposites and all of that different thing. And, and that's just a start, but it's probably enough to give you an idea of what I see. 
What I see in the mirror is probably not too different from what you see in the mirror. I bet you, you knew exactly what I was talking about as I named some of those things that some of you have been there. And when you look in the mirror, those thoughts are coming to mind. You haven't been perfect. You have had some contradictions. You have had some opposites of what God wants to do in you. You had moments where you felt this way and then you've done another. We all have that thing and we've seen ourselves in that. And I hope you saw yourselves in those moments. And the mirror of, a, of a life, a life reflects the human condition. It also asks us to face ourselves. It shows our lives to be a uh, study in contradiction and opposite. The war and conflicts in our world, the division in our country, the dysfunction in our families reflect the contradiction and opposites that live within each of us. But the good news, the good news, that when I look in the mirror and I see the contradictions and the opposites, when I view the world and see its contradictions and opposites and the war and conflicts within, the division, the dysfunction that goes against the will of God, when I look and hear all that and see all that, I know there's good news. And here's that good news, but God. Those two words changes everything. They help us to see things from his perspective. I don't care what I see in the mirror. Don't care about the contradiction and the opposite, what I see or feel, but God changes everything. He changes us to his perspective. And I don't know how you're doing with all of this, but I do know that we tend to remember the things that people say, the unfair treatment, the rejection, the pain. Joseph too felt a lot of pain, but he was able to say to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Are you able to say that? I can't control all my circumstances, but I can control my response to my circumstances. So I can say with Joseph, God meant good. I can say that. No matter what I see, whatever's out in the world, because I believe how God works in opposites, God can change everything. In life, I'm sure there have been many times when you wanted to throw in the towel. Work been hard. Can't sleep at night. Tossing and turning. Retired and still tired. Amen. Times when you have been so far and the only way you can go is up. Well, I'm here to tell you that I have been in that place but God. I have been through the fire but came out like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and not, not even the smell of smoke upon my body. I, if you faint not and continue to faith in God, God will not only show up, but as my great woman say, he'll show out. And, but he will shut up the mouth of the adversary when he tried to bring all that negative stuff your way. And I, I didn't come to give you a long message. I didn't come to give you three points in a poem, but I came to encourage you this morning. No matter what the circumstances look like right now, no matter how you feel and where you have given up, where you shouldn't have get up, given up, when God steps in, he works in opposites, divine turnarounds. And when he steps in, you will see the victory in all of that. He works in opposites. And when he works it out, he gets the glory. And for someone here today, God just wants you to hear this. Be of good courage. Your help is only a prayer way. Sometimes I need a reminder. And how I know God works in opposites and does a turnaround for my life, the hymn writer said it like this, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none of us has never ever known. That's the joy. That in all of what goes on in life, he's with me. And long as he's with me, nothing can harm me. Nothing can stop me. And I can shout with victory. What you meant for evil, devil. What you meant for evil, friends. What you meant for evil, family. What you meant for evil, boss. What you meant for evil, people in the community. God means it for my good. When God changes everything, he works it out for our best. That's the joy of a but God moment in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. As you reflect on this message today, I want you to hear God's voice to us calling us is whether you need a place of but God moment in your life. I want you to reflect today. When you go home, maybe sit in the mirror and just look at the mirror and go, man, I got a lot of things that contradicts and that are opposites, but God. I dare you to write it on your mirror. I dare you to put it in the card. Print out that little picture that says, but God changes everything. You want a copy of it, let me know. We'll print it out for it. Take the bulletin, cut it out and put it somewhere and put that in your life. God works in opposites. <laughs> he works in opposites. And when you feel like it's negative, uh-oh, but God. When things get hard, 
But God, get prophetic with him. Speak over it and watch what God would do. So as we meditate upon that, let's stand and sing 227. I've come to the garden alone. And let's sing with uplifting voices this great, beautiful hymn of the church as you make your response to Almighty God. Let's stand together. assurance of knowing he's with us, we know God can change everything. And sometimes all we got to do is say, but God. And I promise you, that'll put the devil to flight. Amen. Mm -hmm. I tell you, the scared of the devil, they, they believe that God that'll change everything. I do indeed. Indubitably. Amen. I want you to go with that joy in your heart and go with peace in your mind that God is with you. And I pray that the joy of Christ will be with you henceforth always. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's sing our closing hymn together. Let's be a time that binds our hearts in grace and love. The fellowship of Cain I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. And God loves you too. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.